இறையுணர்வு the evening twilight a time filled with rich spiritual current meant specially for the worship of the devata Bhagwan has given us this great opportunity a great blessing to gather and sing his powerful name today is a very special day the day of independence for india several years back in 1947 bhagwan was often found shouting with joy mahatma gandhi ki jai bharat mata ki jai he would hold the peacock feathers that he always held in hand very high up in the air and shout these blessings such was his love devotion to india the very name bharat means a land that travels the light of divine wisdom the one quote that was very dear to the heart of swami vivekananda is what has india been doing for ages except producing sages yes that is the glory of india Swami Vivekananda would say the very air of India is holy the very soil Vivekananda's quote of India producing sages never failed to draw peals of laughter a very happy laughter from our bhagwan Kanchi Paramacharya says the flag the very flag is symbolic of the divine he says the color green is the color of mother durga the protector of the land the golden hue with a touch of orange is the power of the goddesses the goddess of wealth mahalakshmi and the white is 
the power of the Goddess Saraswati, the source of all knowledge. So you see, and the wheel at the center, the symbol of peace, world peace. So the very flag holds such deep meaning. Everything about India is spiritual and deep. I remember reading once Agarab Jairaman was just entering Sanadhi Street house, as though waiting for him. As soon as he entered, Bhagwan shot a question, Jairama, how is India? And Pat gave the reply from Jairam, Swami, India is progressing. And as soon as he heard it, you can imagine how happy Bhagwan must have become. He was full of ananda, and he said to Jairama, Jairama, come, come, come here, Jairama, give me your hand. And then he held it tight in his right hand and shook it. For quite some time, for nearly five minutes, he kept shaking the hands of Jairama. in his ecstatic joy. Then he said, Jairama, you have no idea how happy you have made this beggar by your beautiful reply. Such is the love for India. Such is the love of Bhagawan for India. He often said, India is the land of great masters. It's the Leela Bhumi, the playground of great masters, many of whom always came in the form of beggars. It might be very poor temporarily, but it is spiritually very rich. It is the richest country in the world. And Bhagwan said, he said, Bharata Mata is Loka Mata. She is mother of the whole world. India will flourish and pave the way to the whole world. It will lead in every aspect all the other nations. India's word will be heard on the world stage. There is no other land on the earth like India. India is our heart. This is my father's play playground. Many, many great masters lived here and performed good deeds, and many more will come. The land is holy land. Our land is Rama Bhumi, Krishna Bhumi, Shiva Bhumi, Dharma Bhumi, Punya Bhumi, Veda Bhumi. Only in our country, sages and beggars like me are protected and cared for. We are allowed to do our Divine Father's work in whatever way we want to do, and with freedom. Father knows how to make India flourish forever in all aspects. She will show the right way to the whole world. My Father will save this holy land and the mankind from all dangers. Yes, He will see that no danger befalls on India and all mankind. Nothing, nothing will happen to India and to mankind. The time has come now. We cannot judge things outwardly by the side 
of the sea with the waves. Just looking at the sea with all its waves rising and falling incessantly, you cannot know the depth of the sea. Likewise, my father has got so many ways of doing things and he knows where to do, what to do, when to do. He will definitely do whatever is needful and make this nation, Bharat, not only flourishing but to lead the whole world. India, today's condition of India might look very different, that one would start doubting. But there is a golden period ahead for India. Just as you see only the waves on the surface of the sea and not know the depth, what India looks today is only the waves on the sea, on the surface. The depth only God knows. And when my father wants, he would change the whole thing in a fraction of a second. Swami Ramtit has said, he will always be in some human form or the other and see that our goal is achieved. You see, sometime Japan was flourishing, some time back, and then Germany, then Italy, America, England. But this Vedas says, hereafter, only India. The time has come. My father will do the work nicely. All the great masters, Swami Ramdas, Ramthip, Mahatma Gandhi, Sri Aurobindo, have predicted that India's time has come and only India can lead the whole world. So, how reassuring it is, these words of Bhagwan, with the power of yourself. This is what we have to look up to. But then we must also remember to make this possible that we also must cooperate. We cannot but remember all the sacrifice that those great leaders made for the independence of India. There is never any gain without pain. It is the rule. Remembering those great, great sacrifices of those great, great people, we have to try to sacrifice our selfishness, all the divisions that already exist in the name of these divisions, in the name of caste, in the name of religion, in the name of so many things that we imagine and we have produced, we have now lost our unity, harmony that is very much required to build the future. Let us learn to put India, our country, the first, and ourselves the last. Then only we can contribute to the growth of the land. I remember now the quote of John F. Kennedy. He says, do not think what your country has done for you. But do think what you have done for this, for your country. So, we shall pray to our Bhagwan 
was promised so much, predicted with other great masters, the golden period for India ahead. Right now the situation is so different, all that we can think of is release from the present prevalent dreadful situation. So let us appeal to our Bhagwan here, who is standing all the time, alert, watchful, with his raised hand in benediction, for his immediate divine intervention in order to release the entire humanity from the clutches of these Rakshasic viruses and bring back normalcy, a dharmic normalcy, which Bhagwan, not only really Bhagwan, the great masters have said only India could do it. With its spiritual richness, So we beg you, Bhagwan, to bring a dharmic normalcy in all aspects of life, in all places of the world. Bhagwan, we beg you again, again and again, a million times, to uproot the panic and all the negativities from the hearts of people, arrest the rapid spread of the diseases, enter those medicines that would kill the crowd of viruses instantly and once for all. And Bhagwan, all those great tapasvis, like those leaders who sacrificed everything for the independence in order to free India from the slavery, these great people are also at work day and night, slogging at the very risk of their lives for the sake of other lives, fighting the disease. We beg you, Bhagwan, to give them protection and all-round welfare. We also beg you for a boost to our economy. We seek your blessings for constant remembrance of your powerful name to achieve all that you want us to achieve, all that you want India to achieve. We seek your blessings for being powerful instruments in your hand so that we could rebuild whatever is lacking in the present India, to make it a great nation, the world teacher. And Bhagwan, we seek that ultimate, huge, supreme blessing for our complete, entire purification, so that we could see only Your presence, Your blessings, Your leelas, in all happenings of life, everywhere. Let us repeat, Mahatma Gandhi ki jai, Bharat Mata ki jai, Bhagwan Shri Yogi Ram Sritma ki jai, jai Yogi Ram Sritma.